Makai, here we are in the stunning Eastern Cape. What was life like for a young and teeny growing up in that little village of yours? Wow, Nasa, if we, you think of it, you know, it, it just hit me as you just asked the question. You know, growing up in a village of uh, far away from everything, believing on what you have, that's what it is in front of you, it never mattered to us. You know, it was one of those uh, moments that you live on what you have. You know, but we we were raised by very good parents, good family that really cared about us, make sure that we go to school. You know, we come back to school, we go on and, and do the, the home, you know, to-do list where you go and fetch kettles and, and run the, the horses when it comes to the weekends and being able to fetch water. It was a big part of your day herding cattle, have that's, I got that that's right? That's where the name come from, <laughs> cattle herder. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's a, it's, it's, it was an environment that you should be proud of. Environment where you can tell your kids as well, you know, this is how we were raised, being able to af look after yourself. So you're having this existence uh, out in rural Eastern Cape. How did you get spotted as a oh, cricketer? Wow, that's the journey. <laughs> you know, I, NASA, I remember it was... Um, just after the school afternoon, myself and uh, two friends of mine, we're going to fetch cows, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier on. As we pass this field of ours, we thought that was something else was happening, but we've got a lot of cars, a lot of kids from the other schools, and then um, we're watching it from the distance. And then uh, we, we get called up to come closer, and then we went. And uh, Raymond Boy and Greg Hayes were there, and then they throw cricket balls to us and they show us exactly what we need to do and then we had to follow that and then I was one of those ones that can be able to throw the ball and hit those uh, three poles that they put it on the on the far distance from us and then straight away they say we need to see you almost every time that we come here and then I had to say to them I cannot come here all the time because I've got you know uh, things to do at home so if you want me to come here you need to come and tell my parents that you found something that, you know, I can make a difference into my life into it and then I can make, you know, a living out of it. So that's how, you know, I, I was found straight away from the, you know, a year after I was taken to Australia. You know, that's when it was actually my first time to be on the plane, never been in a, in a big, you know, country. And then um, from there, it just grown. You know, I remember, you know, meeting Mr. Rothman and Mr. Davis uh, in Australia and the, Mr. Whitney, you know, and then there were three people that actually coached us there. And then as a person who comes from the rural areas who knows no English, absolutely blank with everything that get get told, but they found out so quickly that I cannot understand what they say. So what they do, they had to do everything in action. So for me, I can be able to follow up what they want me to do. Because they were the one that actually showed me the way of, you know, how to become a, a good cricketer, how to become a best bowler, you know, in the world. Everything works well for you. Yeah. You progress up through border. 1998, yes. you called up to play for South Africa. Wow. He's caught! He's caught! Yes, up goes the finger! And Nkaya Intini has got his first test wicket. What a moment for the young 20-year-old from the border. Did you understand the significance of that moment? You are, <laughs> and always will be, that is something they can never take away from you, yeah. the first black African to play for this great country. I'll tell you the story about that. We were at the Nets, and then the, Stephen Jones was my coach for, for Boda. He actually came running from the office, and then he says, uh, Makaya, I've got a phone call for you. And I says, from who? Don't you see that we're busy trading? And says, I'm deadly serious. You need to take this call. I get to the call, and then I answer it, and says, uh, hi, Makaya. And then I pick up the, the voice, I says, Hello, Doc, Dr. Ali Baha on the other side. Uh, Makaya, you've been uh, selected to, to play for South Africa, going to, to Australia. I says, 
Doc, are you sure what you're saying? Because this is a big thing. And then Stephen Jones is just sitting here with the joy, you know, seeing that uh, is actually happening. And then you need to be in Johannesburg the first thing tomorrow to join Nancy. Man, that didn't hit me at that time. Going home to tell my parents that, listen, I'm joining the national team now, so I'll be going away for a while. It was the moment that I could not even, you know, put in writing. With the tag of first black African to yeah. play for South Africa, with that comes responsibility and pressure. Did you feel that responsibility and pressure or not? Not, not at that time, because the cricket was still part of uh, my joyful moments. There was no, you know, breaking into it and then understanding of uh, what is pressure. I'm still young. I'm still enjoying every moment by just running around bowling, you know, to whoever that is, is actually batting. Being able to learn, you know, cricket in, in, in that, you know, um, extra level of it. They always mention that, you know, that you are the first cricket, a black South African to play for South Africa. And then I always remind myself that, no, I'm not. We had Herschel Gibbs, we had uh, Paul Adams, and then those were players that were before me. So how come I'll be the first African to play, you know, um, in, in, in the national team? I was always, you know, I, I would say hiding behind them. You know, even, even though that I, I know that I'm the, I'm, I'm the, I was actually the first African to, to represent, you know, the country. So the pressure, I always throw it to them. They were the first one. But with all respect to yeah. those great names, uh, yeah. and they, they did a lot, yeah. I've only realized your importance since being out with you here. I have to be <laughs> honest. I, my taxi driver drove today, black African, uh. and when he saw you, he went, oh my God, there is Makai and Tini. <laughs> Every, everyone around this place, they see you, yeah. And it's almost like a Tendulkar or a Kohli in, in India, India or whatever. Yeah. Do you understand now no. the meaning of no, what you have done? With, with, without a doubt, Nasser, I think he has made so much impact, you know, to a lot of people without me understanding what has, how much he has done. You know, there's always a, a massive pressure, you know, with us as black cricketers because the sport that we're playing is actually... It's the only sport that you're always being looked at, you know, all the time. It's not like football where every single kid is actually playing it. Cricket or rugby, it's a harder sport, you know, to penetrate into, you know, as, a, as, as we all know that is a white dominant sport, you know. So for us, being able to maintain that and stay as long as we can, you know, it was, it was a lot of pressure because we wanted to break through the barrier of saying that uh, the black cricketers, they are not good enough. We had to stand up for ourselves and being able to show them that a sport is a sport. It doesn't matter what color are you. If you're good enough to represent the country, you don't have to be quoted as a certain color. One thing I've realized with you is that sometimes when, you're, when people are off camera, yeah. they switch their personality. Uh -huh. I've seen you with all these people. And you give them as much time. You never forget that little bit of cow dung uh, or whatever. You never I'm, forget your roots, <laughs> do you, ever? I think, I think that's, uh, I, I've been blessed when it comes to those kind of things. That is matter what uh, sex gender is. You know, I'm a human being like everyone else. You know, a, a person who was never been given a judge mental, mentally, you know, where you are able to level everyone. It doesn't matter black or white, colored. I remember meeting up with the Dada Desmond Tutu. When he says, he actually called me aside and says, never underestimate the value of you as a human being. And then those ways actually sticks, you know, right through the, the, the level of play that I played. And then he says to me, never think everybody knows you. If you meeting someone, you must always say your name as well. Don't think that everybody knows you. That's why I think from my point of view, that leveled me into everybody. Meeting you, knowing me, whatever, where I meet you, because I give you time. Because I believe that that 10 seconds of my time with you, it could change 
a lot of thoughts to people that they're walking past. You mentioned Desmond Tutu there. Yes. I want to mention another name as well, the great Nelson Mandela. Oh, yes. When you got to 100 test matches, he sent you a little letter. Yeah. And I don't want to paraphrase the great man, <laughs> but he said, congratulations, Micaiah. What you have achieved goes beyond the number of matches you have played. You have demonstrated, especially to the youth of our country, that everyone can rise above their circumstance and achieve success. Yeah. That, that must have been something very special to get from it, him. And how important was Mandela to you? I remember when we, 2003, when uh, we were in Cape Town and then um, we were preparing for you know, our first, first game against the, the West Indies. He called me aside and then he used the phrase in Kosa. And then he says, uh, you are a star, go back home and tell the people that you, you come from, that you are a star. So those words on its own, they, they actually cover the rest of my career. That I must go back home and tell the people that they raised me, that I am a star. You see, that's on its own. It gave me the, the goosebumps coming from him. A person who spent 27 years in prison, not even me knowing that he was in prison. But the moment comes out of prison and then being able to know my name and understand what I'm going through and being able to just give you those wisdom uh, words, they actually, you know, they, they made me becoming even much more a better person in life and being able to try and, and walk on his path, being able to give people time as he did. You must touch on the quota system. When you were selected, I remember yeah. in 99, I was captain 2000 at yes. Centurion, and they announced on the Tannoy system the squad for the next tour or something, and your name was mentioned. Yep. And I hope you don't mind, but a couple of the South African team's eyes rolled a little bit. Yeah. As if to say, mm, that's a quota selection. Did you feel a quota selection or not? Whew, NASA, you know, these are sensitive uh, words to be called on. That word on its own, you know, it created a negativity between us and, uh, and, um, and one dominant, if I can put it that way. Because now, all of a sudden, we become, you know, this, this far apart from each other. We lack what we call it um, helping hand. You are on your own, they are on their own. So for you, as you heard that you are coming in as a quota player, that on its own, it gives you a question mark on top of everything that you're achieving. You know, when it comes to performance, how you perform and then how that performance brings into the team, it's almost like you've done absolutely nothing. You can take a five, uh, that's nothing. You have, not, you have actually haven't achieved anything yet. You but know. surely, <laughs> After 101 test matches. <laughs> the same was said about Hashim Amla, wasn't it? When yes. he first came in yes. and wherever yes. it was here, wasn't it? In Port Elizabeth, he played against England. Everyone said, oh, I'd... and look how two great players have come from that system. You can't argue with it, surely. <laughs> I'll tell, tell you something about, about that. That's when then the, the quota name actually hit me very hard. We played England in, uh, in Centurion, my hundred. We get to Durban for my 101. We picked up how many we get? Three in the whole test match. That's when I realized that I've never, I've I actually haven't achieved anything. When we lost in, 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 um, in Durban, we went to Cape Town. The first thing that hits me, it's when they're announcing the next team. And then my name was not there. Everyone is still there. And then my name is not in a, in a, in a, in a, in a 11 that is playing. NASA, that's when I realized that right through my career, 100, 101, it didn't mean anything to the rest of them. If as a team, you get bowled out twice in the same game and still lose by margin, you only bowled once. And then we, the whole team actually picked up three wickets, if I'm not lying. But you be the only one being dropped and then being dropped, dropped 
I would have understand if you say, we drop you for this team. We're playing in Cape Town. We're going to Wanderers, where the weekend is going to be very good seeming weekend for the Simmers. But the call that you receive, it tells you that we're not renewing your contract from one game that you failed. So you're out of the team for the rest of your life. How would you handle selection now? Is it naive of if, me to say, just pick your best side? Is that naive? Is no, that a foreigner that's, talking? That's, that's not naive, uh, Nasa. And then I think that's the best way to go. Regardless of what, the children of today is not the same as the children of our time, where cricket was something that is, is being introduced to us. They played cricket from junior level. They grew up playing the same game with the same friendship, friends that they have that they play cricket even today with them. If you grew up in that environment, everybody sees you. Your stats says it all that you are becoming a great cricketer. Then when it comes to selection, the stats should be saying that now he's ready to represent the country. Then when you get selected, you are not getting selected for the sake of the number. You are selected because you deserve it and you're selected on merit. That's number one. Then then the quota name cannot be used in that. You need to make sure that if you get selected, you are given the same power as the rest of them. Because all of these guys that you, you, you're actually playing with them, you played with them right through from school level up until all of you representing the country, then you can't say you're selecting these players and the players of color are being selected because of the quota. You didn't take them from the bush. They actually played cricket with you. It, it looks like the present regime are going down that road. It looks Perfect. like. And a press conference the other day before the Cape Town Test match, Faf du Plessis was asked, Captain, it looks like the colour is draining from your team. And that, Faf's, that Faf's answer was, I don't see colour. That, that's, that's for me, that's a perfect answer. Because if, if you don't see colour, any person that comes into the team, you treat him exactly the same as the, the guy that is, is the same colour as you that is sitting next to you. Then you are, the best, you are the best captain that the country needs because you are able to throw the ball to anybody. You are able to put, if he's a best man, to any position, even if it's a position ahead of you as a captain. For me, that's, that's the best thing you could say into anyone who's actually uh, asking you that particular question. So it's, it's one of those things that if South Africa wants to grow sport in this country, we shouldn't be looking of who's the scrum off, who's the fly off. If that person is good in that particular position, let him be in that particular position. Wipe the colour issue. Is enough being done in your little rural village of Mdingi, in the townships, that the Let next uh, yep. Makai and Tini, the next Hashim Amla, whoever, yep. will come through? Let me tell you something, uh, Nasa. I think that's where we're lacking. I want to tell you about the province that I come from, where almost every single black cricketer come from, which is the area that we're in now, the Eastern Cape. Border is white elephant. There's absolutely nothing that is happening there. That's where the breeder of the black cricketers come from. Since the, the mixing of the provinces, that on its own actually faded. The black cricketers disappeared. There was, there's no more rural cricketers, what you call coaching. There's no more what we used to know as Baker's Mini Cricket at that time of ours that is actually happening in, in, in our rural areas anymore. That is done, faded, disappeared. I will say out loud and clear saying that there's absolutely nothing, nothing that has been done enough to bring those black cricketers into their understanding and playing cricket nothing whatsoever and it just shows what a great story you are from a, <laughs> if you don't mind me calling you a cattle herder absolutely feel free to, that, a hun that's... to 101 yeah. test matches and the rest 
yeah. and the way you've carried yourself, it is a great story. Thank you, you must be proud. That, that was my, my book title, Black Men Behind the Cow Dung. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nasser.